Hi everyone. I'm going to read from a book that was my sister's, The Golden Words of a Sufi Sheikh by His Holiness M.R. Baba Mahayadeen. I was searching through the book and I found a few verses, some are short, I'll bring a little closer, but I decided to go to number 666, I know that people don't like that number, but there's a reason for that, here it is, I'm going to read it to you, it's a story. Now, people study religions all over the world. Some of my children attended the Holy Family University. And at the university, there was a course about world religion. And that is a Catholic university that's teaching this class. And my children learned about different religions, Buddhism, Hinduism, Baptist, Protestants. So they learned about religions from all over the world. So I'm going to take the book away. Now this is just, I found this little beautiful glitter jar. It's really kind of neat. I found it at the thrift store. I'm going to read you from the book. My son, a high-cased man, one who was very titled, came to a certain village and married a girl who lived there. He was very happy. After the wedding, the new bride and groom set out to return to the man's village. Walking a little distance ahead of them was a man very low in case, one who killed animals, ate their flesh, and used the hides to make shoes. The low cast man was chewing a very fragrant leaf called betel with immense enjoyment and spitting betel juice as red as blood on the ground as he walked. The new bride smelled the fragrance and developed a desire for the betel. When the bride and groom came to a river, the man who was chewing betel was already there waiting for the ferry. As soon as the bride saw him, she ran to him and took his hand. Even though he was low caste and she was high caste, she clung to his hand. Surprised, he bowed to her and exclaimed, Oh, my lady, please let go of me. Why are you telling me to let go? I am your true wife, she replied. Her high caste husband stared at her in disbelief. What is this? How has my wife denigrated to such a state? He was a man who had never eaten flesh. He was so ashamed of what she had done that he turned his back on her and went away. The low caste man asked her, Why did you come to me like that? Please give me some of your sweet smelling betel. I saw the trail of your spittle on the path. It smelled so good that I decided you would be good for me. You smell wonderful, she said. But when she actually went home with him and saw the skins lying out in the sun, she realized that he lived in a place where cattle were slaughtered. He was a shoemaker, and so he soon taught her to stitch leather shoes. He also asked her to cook the beef, knowing she was a vegetarian. Just eat a little beef and you will see, he said. You will like it, my lady. It did taste good to her, as she ate it and praised it. I have never tasted anything so delicious in all my life. You are definitely the most suitable husband for me. Never have I experienced anything like this before. She embraced him and kissed him with fondness, and she began to eat beef and stitch shoes. But after some time, she realized that her previous life would have been better, and that now she was no more than a shoemaker. 
She had left a potentially happy life with a wealthy, entitled, high-caste man who did not eat flesh, merely because of her desire for battle spirit spit. Like this, when people in the world lack wisdom and follow their minds, reaching out for whatever they desire, in the end, they can only lose their modesty and their exalted qualities, as well as the happiness, freedom, and truth in their lives. And that's the end of the story. And then I found another section on page 262. Everything a man has done is apparent in the smell of his sweat. As soon as any being perceives the man's odor, it will either run away in fear or attempt to destroy him. If these evils and sins did not dwell within man, no being would ever harm him. Any being would bow to him, pay obedience to him, and worship him. This is one thing we must consider. Here is another point. There are eight kinds of poisonous snakes which are normally prey to an eagle or a Garuda, the king of all the birds. When these snakes are struck by the talons and beak of the Garuda, or even if the shadow of the Garuda falls on them, they will die. In the way the snake has the strength of its poison, the Garuda has the strength to kill snakes. When the Garuda flies in the sky, it glides in perfect poise and balance, looking for snakes or small animals. It concentrates on what is on the ground while maintaining a perfect balance in the sky, gliding in circles. When it spots its prey, it swoops down from the sky and carries it off. The snake dies as soon as it is caught. Other creatures fall unconscious. The Garuda carries its prey into a tree and eats it. He can see this with, we can see this with our own eyes, can we not? We need to reflect upon how the Garuda catches and kills snakes. In the same way, no man, in, sorry, in the same way, in man, there are millions of poisonous snake-like qualities. His poisonous qualities are worse than the venom of snakes, worse than the qualities of any animal. Those poisons exist with many different colors in man, its qualities, words, actions, vision, speech, thoughts, intentions, and behavior. When the man takes on snake-like qualities and actions, whatever he bites will die. There are so many different kinds of poisons in him as there are in the various kinds of snakes. He has the qualities of the cobra, which thinks a little, has compassion, and waits for some understanding before doing harm. But there are also snakes within him which sting without hesitation or reflection, and snakes which actively seek to do harm. Therefore, son, you are amidst the snakes that are within man. You must walk very carefully in order to avoid their venom. If you want to be rid of the qualities and poisons of these snakes, you must be like the Garuda. With patience, you must take on the body of, their, of the absolute faith called Im, Imden and fly in the heavens 
on wings of determination and certitude, gliding silently with the balance of definite luminous wisdom. Balance yourself with the Alda. There is nothing other than you, O oh God. You are Allah. When you are balanced in this way, if the evil snake qualities come, they will be killed as soon as the shadow of that sound touches them. The poison of their evil thoughts will die. Dive with wisdom and strike the evil. Like the Garuda, you must fall on those evil qualities, strike them, kill them, tear them apart, and throw them away. You must be the Garuda of wisdom, and with the might of grace, you must kill all the poisonous creatures dwelling within you. If you do this, the former the forms taken by the poisonous qualities of the millions of human snakes in this illusionary world will be conquered. If not, you will become food for the evil qualities and poisonous actions of man in the same way that many lives become the food for snakes. You must know their capabilities in the way that the snake has the strength of its poison and the Garuda has the strength to kill snakes, there is a strength within wisdom which can kill the poison of the evil qualities within man. Kill these poisonous snakes and escape, then you can attain completion for your soul. You can exist as God within God speak to him and mingle with him now it's interesting how the snake has poison but how it's described here in man we have these poisons but we have words actions vision speech thoughts intentions behavior we have many poisons within us not just one. We're the highest animal. We can think. We're led by our soul and what we think. We have thoughts and those thoughts do create our life. Our thoughts can hinder us or help us. Our thoughts can poison us. They can poison other people. Our words can poison other people. Our behavior can poison other people. Our behavior can affect our thoughts, and our thoughts can affect our behavior. Our intentions can in affect our thoughts, and our thoughts can affect our intentions. Our speech can affect our thoughts, and our thoughts can qualify our speech. Our visions affect our thoughts. And our thoughts affect our vision. So he's giving some advice in the way that he wrote these words of wisdom. And this is a book called The Golden Words of a Sufi Sheikh. And I'm sorry if I said some words incorrectly, but I'm reading in the dark. And I wanted you to see this book. By His Holiness M. R. Baba Mahayadeen. And I thank you for watching, and I hope you found this to be very peaceful.